So yeah, you got five questions of which you pick three. Um, so the first question, it asks, what is the internal resistance of a battery? Uh, describe the internal resistance in your own words. Um, so this is something actually, I think I spent a fair amount of time in the lecture going over. There's something about shorting the battery. And um, I think I demonstrated in the lecture with the uh, simulation, what shorting effectively does and all that. Um, and internal resistance becomes very important in describing that setup. Uh, I guess, um, so yeah, I, I think what I would say about this question is watch the lecture and, uh, you know, describe in succinctly in your own words what that means to you. <laughs> I say it this way because, you know, there are correct answers, but, you know, like uh, with the internal resistance, I can give you the like the shortest definition that I would uh, um, know from having taught actually basic semiconductor circuit course a long time ago. I could define internal resistance of a battery as the open circuit voltage divided by closed circuit current da, 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 of a battery. And that would be a correct answer. <laughs> and in fact, uh, I've even given you a way to measure internal resistance of a battery. But the uh, uh, <laughs> correct answer is not as useful as answer that shows you your understanding. So, <laughs> um, and so that's what it, whenever a question says, describe something in your own words, that's what it means. Um, so. Uh, let me leave that there. So there's a longer lecture. I think uh, that's really where um, your understanding of internal resistance should come from. Okay, so with that, uh, let's see. Uh, Coincider two resistors being placed in a circuit. Uh, Coincider the equivalent resistance of the res compared to res if... Uh, oh, this, I guess, relates to your um, introduction to circuit to lab that you did. Uh, when they are in series, um, the equivalent resistance will always be greater than these two. And you can see that in the formula too, you know, R equivalent is R1 plus R2. And um, I guess uh, the just the, the description, descriptive description that R equivalent is greater than either of the two, that it's important, it's useful when you are doing like quick mental calculation, when you're actually building circuits. You have R1 of some value, R2 of some value, and you just want to quickly figure out what what can I expect to see when you put them in series, then a simple description like uh, equivalent resistance is greater than either of these two helps do that quickly. And in fact, it's uh, easier <laughs> yeah. um, in the, if the registers are placed in parallel configuration. So you could give the, you know, the formula for adding the resistances in parallel. They add in reciprocals. So, you know, it's easy to write down. But what's sometimes not the easiest to see is um, what it means. Uh, even if you wrote it down as our equivalent is, you know, what it is, if you uh, took the reciprocal of that fraction stuff, then, uh, like, even this doesn't fully say, uh, <laughs> what does it mean? And uh, one of the mathematical thing you can work out just uh, examining these, and this is what you saw in the intro to circuits lab, is that this equivalent resistance for the parallel circuits, it, it, registers being added in parallel, is that this is less of a smaller number than either R1 or R2 alone. So for example, if imagine you are adding a 100 ohm register, with a mega ohm register. And if you are adding them in series, whatever that result is, greater than a mega ohm, the larger of the two. And if you are adding them in parallel, then whatever that equivalent resistance is, it's a smaller than 100 ohm, the smaller of the two. It's kind of useful thing to, well, that's, <laughs> it's getting it. I don't know. I would have liked to ask that question if uh, um, the textbook had it. It didn't, so I wrote my own. Question three. I guess I covered this before, but I didn't see it in recordings. Uh, maybe I, you know, I think this is in a recording. I remember watching through it. 
because I okay so I think questions three and four let me just point you to where the recording is because uh, every semester I teach you this class I rewatch all my <laughs> past lecture videos and I think so the place where you will find those two recordings they're in a bit of an awkward place but I didn't have any better place to put them but because it's not every week I do questions from conceptual question set in the virtual classes so some recording thing um, so it's under homework help, which is admittedly the page after the conceptual questions, but you know, you can jump around, nothing blocks you from seeing this. And I believe one of the, um, I remember, ah, so I think it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, this question. So uh, this is the question, question number three. <laughs> um, I've uh, done that addition in, um, so you can watch that <laughs> all of 40 minutes. Um, and the question after that about the voltmeters, ammeters, uh, which you also answered as part of your uh, pre lab or uh, Tuesday's lab, it's uh, also covered here uh, voltmeters and ammeters. Um, so, so, yeah, it's uh, all there. <laughs> so, uh, I guess. Uh, I, so your textbook covers voltmeters and ammeters in sec uh, chapter 10, you know, 10, section 10.4. That feels super late to me, but uh, well, that's where it's, uh, it is in your textbook and it's covered in detail here. So with those, I think uh, uh, this last question here, um, you kind of saw this, uh, saw some aspect of it again <laughs> with your intro to circuits lab, which is why we did the lab. Um, so, you have to, in a given circuit, so they are saying something about the register, something about changing the resistance, replace with a smaller or greater register. And before, you can categorically say uh, how that will change the dissipation of energy. You need additional information. That's what it comes down to. The expression I like to write down, and the one you have seen in like or have or will see in the lecture, is um, so with the power dissipated in circuit. The basic relationship we start out with is the one that comes almost straight from definition. You know, rate of change per time. So it's a rate of energy change or change of energy per some unit time. That, so using that with uh, electric potential energy results in this expression, current times voltage. This is very closely tied to uh, the definition of power in the mechanical sense. Now, when you have a circuit that's involving registers, meaning you are dealing with Ohm's law, uh, voltage drop across a register is the current through the register times the resistance. When you're dealing Ohm's law, this expression here, it can get rewritten in two different ways. You can rewrite it, eliminating the expression for eliminating current and expressing power in terms of voltage and resistance. When you do that, this is what you end up with, V squared over R. And when you eliminate voltage, you know, plug this in, IR for V, then what you end up with is I squared R. And when you look at this expression, the resistance R is in two different places. It's either on the denominator, like here, or it's on the numerator, like here. And so, you know, all these expressions are all, they're consistent with each other. They're, they're not, there's no conflict of any kind, <laughs> no paradoxes here. Um, and in the lecture, I think I do go in more depth with that. Uh, what I will say here is that um, which of these two expressions are useful, not, not about correctness, because they both are correct, but in terms of their usefulness, which is more useful, it kind of depends. If you have your circuit set up in such a way that the voltage across the, cap the register will remain same, then sure, use this. And it'll tell you, oh, greater resistance means less power dissipated. And that's what you saw with the series of circuit um, in the lab. But somehow, if your circuit is set up in a way where your current will remain the same, then then yeah, greater resistance means uh, more, uh, more power dis uh, dissipated. So uh, we can also actually relate that to your 
uh, circuit control lab. Let me see if I can jump there. Um, it takes a little bit of uh, intro slash explanation, but let me. Um, so the part of the lab that showed you that is the circuit number four. So when you so when you are working with the circuit, um, you also that when you got to circuit number four, uh, light bulb one has is brighter than these two light bulbs combined. And if you kind of think of these as a single element, then this is the kind of circuit that enforces the same amount of current through bulb one as the combined current through these elements. And what you see is that the thing with the greater resistance did have greater power dissipation, brighter light bulb. So, so, um, so back to this conceptual question, if they tell you, oh, you, you are replacing the register, uh, you need to know, uh, what, what am I keeping constant, voltage or current? Or if it's, it's somewhere in between, how is my voltage and current changing? You kind of need to know that um, to actually answer, am I going to have greater or smaller dissipation of energy? So with that, oh, I think I've given you mostly all the pieces. So you know, you, you can use the examples from your um, uh, intro to circuit lab that you've seen those examples. Um, 